Algebraists spend a lot of time thinking and talking about automorphisms of field extensions. Well, exactly how do those automorphisms give us information about the roots of polynomials, which is, after all, what we're trying to understand in this course? In this video, we're going to take a look at that connection between the automorphisms that a field extension has, as well as the fixed fields of those automorphisms, and the roots of polynomials whose roots happen to belong to those fields. So we're first going to take a look at the close relationship between automorphisms and roots by showing that an automorphism of a field extension must preserve the set of roots of a polynomial over that base field. And then secondly, we want to look at the close connection between automorphisms and normal extensions. If I have a normal extension of a field, then it turns out I'm going to exactly know how many distinct automorphisms of that field extension there are. So what is the relationship between automorphisms and the roots of polynomials? Well, automorphisms are going to give us this really important piece of information. They're going to tell us about the relationships between the roots of a polynomial equation. But in order to understand all of the roots, we need to have access to all of those roots. In other words, we would like to have a normal extension, one in which we must have all of the roots of a polynomial as long as we have at least one. Extensions that are not normal are actually more difficult to work with than extensions that are. Because in order to fully understand the roots of a polynomial, we need to be able to have all of the roots of that polynomial in our field. So there are two things that could potentially go wrong. The first is that the extension itself is not a normal extension. In other words, there's a polynomial which has one but not all of its roots in that extended field. Our favorite example, of course, is t cubed minus 2 over the rationals and the extension q adjoin the real cube root of 2. So this polynomial is irreducible over the rationals. You can check by Eisenstein's criterion. But on the other hand, it has a root, 2 to the 1 third, in the extended field. Now, what is an automorphism of E over Q going to look like? Well, it's the same as asking what other elements are there that would be indistinguishable from 2 to the 1 third in the extended field. Specifically, what else in E will behave exactly the same way that 2 to the 1 third does? So what is phi, if phi is an automorphism of e over q, applied to 2 to the 1 third going to be? Well, at minimum, phi of 2 to the 1 third must also be a root of the polynomial t cubed minus 2. Why? Because, well, cube phi of 2 to the 1 third, and use the fact that phi is an automorphism, phi of 2, because phi is an automorphism over q, has to be equal to 2. And therefore, phi applied to 2 to the 1 third cubed minus 2 has to equal 0. In other words, 2 to the 1 third is a root of p. And phi of 2 to the 1 third must also be a root of p. But the problem is that there is only one number in E that satisfies t cubed minus 2 is equal to 0, namely the real cubed root of 2. And so there cannot be any difference between 2 to the 1 third and phi applied to 2 to the 1 third. And because our automorphism preserves 2 to the 1 third, which generates the basis of e over q, it therefore preserves the entire field e over q. So the only automorphism of e over q is the identity function. Therefore, the Galois group of e over q has only one element in it, therefore is isomorphic to a trivial group. So this was a problem. We didn't get any interesting relationships between the roots of p because we only had access to one of the roots of p, one out of three because this wasn't a normal extension. The second potential problem is that we might have a normal extension after all, but we might be missing some roots for a different reason. So here's another example. How about t to the fourth plus t squared minus 6, a quartic polynomial over q. And look at the extension by the square root of 2. So we can check that this is, again, an irreducible polynomial inside of the rationals. It has no rational roots. And when I extend to include the q, uh, square root of 2, I actually end up getting two roots for p, square root of 2 and minus the square root of 2. Now, what's an automorphism of e over q going to look like this time? Well, this time it turns out we're going to get a non-trivial automorphism over q because I can switch the sign on my square root of 2. In fact, if we factor p, we can factor p over e into the product of t plus radical 2, t minus radical 2, and t squared plus 3, which is irreducible in E. And you can check that the automorphisms of E over Q consist of the identity, which sends a plus b radical 2 to itself, 
and then also the automorphism which sends the square root of 2 to the minus square root of 2, which is non-trivial. And therefore, the Galois group of E over Q has two elements in it and is therefore isomorphic to Z mod 2Z. But the problem is, we don't have enough information to determine the relationship between all of the roots of P because only two of the roots of P belonged to this extended field. Even though E was a normal extension, because it's degree 2 and every degree 2 extension is normal, the reason that we're missing roots here is not because of a lack of normality, but because of a lack of the rest of the roots of P belonging to this field. So ultimately, this argues for we need a normal extension if we want to understand all of the roots, and in particular, we need a normal extension that contains all of the roots of our polynomial. Namely, in the end, we want to be interested most in the splitting field of P. Because in this example, while we can interchange radical 2 and minus radical 2 as an extension over Q, um, we can't exchange them with radical negative 3 and minus the radical negative 3, the other roots of P. So the, the crux of the issue is that an automorphism's action on a root, at minimum, must also be a root of P. But, on the other hand, not every pair of roots of a polynomial can be swapped, necessarily, by an automorphism. We can swap plus and minus radical 2. We can swap plus and minus radical negative 3 in this example. But we can't swap radical 2 with radical minus 3, even if they did happen to belong to the same extended field. So the real question when we think about automorphisms of fields are not just can we swap uh, root for another root, which is always going to be true, but is every pair of roots swappable? And the answer to that question in general is no.